It is Saturday, September 7th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. I apologize if you're watching this on the day of release that it's gone up so late. I wasn't able to record uh, this morning, and then I had uh, several hours of travel, and so I'm finally getting to it now. And uh, it's a Saturday crossword, so it may well be a tricky one. I hope it's not too tricky because I'm solving this quite late in the day and I'd, I'd like it to go up today if possible. So uh, we'll see if I can get through it in time for that. And this hopefully not too tricky edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Josh Allen, Mike from Vermont, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster, the incorrigible Sheila Beeler, and the indefinable Charlie Paget. So thank you so much to the five of them. They're benefactors of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign, which means they support this channel. They bring us this series and keep this whole thing going day by day for that. I'm very grateful. Thank you to them and to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve uh, Patreon campaign at any level. I really do appreciate it. Thanks to all of you who do contribute. If you'd like to, you can find that campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve or via the description field link. The bonus videos are there and the official mug for those benefactors. Um, uh, do subscribe on YouTube as well. And now let's just get right on to this, this solve. So this is a Saturday themeless crossword, possibly a tricky puzzle by David P. Williams, who's constructed around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited once again by Joel Faliano. And let's start solving. Let's see how we get on. Labor tactic, a strike, a labor union might strike. Um, an impasse is a stonewall or something that's not going to be have a rebus on a day like today. Iris feature could be an iris of the eye, you know, component of the eye. It could be a flower, um, could be iris in terms of lenses more generally, I guess. Uh, flunky, a flunky is sort of a, a kind of stoolie or, so, you know, someone who serves you. I don't know. R doesn't help me there. One running the showing, perhaps. An agent running a sort of showing of a flat or a house or something. Hmm. Maybe strike is wrong. Whizzes. Yeah, I want this to be aces, although... I don't want these both to be A's. That would be unlikely. Whizzes. Could be a verb. I'm going to delete that. Experimental music documentary of 2024. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it were simply named for Eno or Ono, one of the, one of the two official solo artists of the New York Times crossword. Uh, Yoko Ono or Brian Eno, but I don't know if that's the case. Uh, Ding Dong, an idiot or a dummy or something like that could mean something else. Uh, etymologists' interests are the derivation of words, the, um, I don't know, interest, plural, the usages. It's not, etym etymology is not so much about usage. It's about History of words. Hmm. How they were called coinings is too, is too long. Out of the blue, sudden. Please let me put something in the grid in which I'm confident. Move slowly. To move slowly is to... I don't know. Relative of a heckle phone. I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's probably a tuba, though. It's probably an instrument. Hecklephone, I bet. Like a sousaphone or a flugelhorn or something like that. I bet it is. Sonon Blank Quando, Primo Levi novel whose title translates to If Not Now, When. Sonon, if not n now. So na now is the, is the word we're translating. I don't think now is going to have an, a D in it. Boy, I'm not doing well, am I? This might not be tuba. If this isn't sudden, this might not be tuba. Give temporarily. To give temporarily loan to, maybe it's not tuba. Oh my goodness. I'm not confident about any of this. This is a disaster so far. Truly a disaster. Family inheritance, gene pool? Question, the question mark makes me think it's that rather than something financial. You inherit genes. Experimental, maybe it is Eno or Ono. 
Let's put an N there. Does that help with etymologist's interest? We're going to put an S there. Origins, origins of words. Is that impasse? A logjam. Yes, oh, we're finally getting somewhere. I now have multiple clues working well together for the first time. Iris feature. Uh, I'm not sure. Flunky. Um, I, I mean, I want this to be a kind of, you know, peon or stooly or or uh, flunky. You know, it says flunky am. So what is it? What's another word for this? I, I can't think of one that fits here. One running the showing. Per oh yeah, agent. Okay, so maybe it is a it is a house showing or that kind of thing. Whizzes. No, not aces, but but it is the verb to zip by would be to whiz. So whizzes is zips. Experimental music. Yeah. Okay. Le oh, Lamaze, labor as in childbirth. Ah, okay. I was on the wrong track there. Iris feature. Oh, areola. There we go. That'll be that'll be right. Let's look at the crosses. Signs up for yes. If you sign up for an organization, you join it. And flunky a minion. That that is the word I was looking for that I could not place. Scores. So scores of you know clues in this crossword. There are scores of them. There are a lot of them. I mean, come on, man, man, this is ridiculous, you might exclaim, as I might exclaim, trying to get my <laughs> break into this crossword. Everything's coming along great. So far, so good. There we go. I can, I can maybe finally say that with some degree of honesty, which I couldn't have a few minutes ago. Levels of corporate hierarchy, so to speak. Um, I don't know. Not sure what we're looking for there exactly. Uh, apologue. Is this sort of like apologia? What is this? What is apologue? I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure what we're looking for there. How someone might be in love, madly in love, maybe? That's a very common uh, adverb for that. Um, levels of, oh, ladders, corporate ladders. Ladders, what? Levels of corporate hierarchy, so to speak. I don't know. Oh, ladder rungs, as in you're climbing the ladder, you're going up many rungs, many levels of corporate hierarchy. Okay, I buy that. Uh, pain blanc, French toast in, in French, right? So in French, French toast is pain perdu, which is lo literally lost bread. You can use it for leftover bread. Um, like material you can sink your teeth into, meaty, it's, you might say, that's ah, a very meaty tome, a sort of big, substantial book to sink your teeth into. Deep fears are, I wonder if this is, if the question mark indicates deep fears, meaning something to do with oceans, um, some, or something phobia, maybe. We could fit phobia after this. I, I don't know, I'm not sure. Small-minded, a petty person could be described as small-minded. See something? Deep fears. See? I don't know. Fear of the sea. Methods for sharing pirated material. Um, oh, boy, I haven't heard this referenced in ages. BitTorrent is a... Um, BitTorrents are sort of... I never really got into this. It's some kind of distributed method for file sharing and download. Okay, listings on a blog roll. Links. That was, well, speaking of sort of older internet references, BitTorrents and blog roll, uh, in the era of blogs, your blog roll would be a sort of list of um, other blogs that you liked or appreciated or maybe were affiliated with. Okay, details. The nitty gritty. Oh, Maybe this isn't links. What is it? I thought that's what a blog roll was. Nitty gritty. It didn't say bog roll, did it? Wait. No. List no, it didn't. It said blog roll. Listings on a blog roll. Oh, sites. Other other sites. I see. Okay. So that's fine. Stretch near a shoulder, say. So a stretch of road near a shoulder? You could have a shoulder on a motorway, on a highway. Um, not sure what we're looking for there. 
one of the Goonies in the Goonies. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I have seen this film. I don't know it as well as some people do. I, I don't know the names of the Goonies offhand. Okay, Zing. Nice one, something like that. If you if, if someone sort of quippily insults someone, you might say Zing, nice one, that sort of thing. Let's see if that works. Wizu. Oh, that's funny. Here's Asus. That's what I wanted Wizus to be up here. That was my first guess, and it turned out to be accurate in a different case of the same clue. All right, poivre go with. So in French, poivre is um, pepper, so common uh, you know, seasoning served with pepper is salt, which is sel. So there we go. Sel et poivre. All right, stretch near a shoulder, say. Oh, a bike lane, right, okay. So you could have a bike lane, bike lane running along the shoulder of a road. Oh, is Mikey one of the Goonies? That sort of sounds familiar. Mountain grouping. Oh, a massif. So a massif is a is a sort of sort of a mountain range. Um, uh, so that that'll be it. Um, reach as new heights to soar to new heights. Uh, so there we go. Fast food chain with palm trees on its packaging. Oh, uh, In and Out. Yeah, there we go. Um, that is true. I wouldn't have, if you'd asked me what the, what in and outs packaging looks like, I wouldn't have been able to tell you, but having said, having read this, yes, I do. I can picture it now in my head. I haven't had in and out in years. Anyway, uh, to deprive of would be to, I'm pretty sure that's not only just a U.S. specific chain, but it's really particular to the West coast of the United States. And even then, um, it's not really everywhere in the West coast. It's, it's, fairly regional. Anyway, to deprive of might be to rob you of a particular experience. For instance, weak is feeble. Surgeon slash writer Gawande. Oh, I have, I have, I have, I am familiar with this name at least. Is it Atul? I've definitely seen this name before. I couldn't tell you why or, or, or what this person has written, but videographer's words before recording, perhaps videographer's words before recording and go I don't, I don't know is that what it is okay i'm just trying to think what would actually fit with what i suspect goes here let's see if that works big bill casually a c note a hundred or a g note for a grand is that word in two african country names uh congo so yeah, so see, so that okay, so see, note that does that does work there then. So that's a hundred hundred dollar bill probably in this context. Okay, and then a tool looks right, so there that's all fine. It might be fluid, a fluid ounce as a measurement, and censoring in a way, blurring out. Yes, if you if you blur something out in a film or a photograph or something, you're, you're essentially censoring it. So hence, in, in a way, I mean, that's a way you can censor something. Um, or you could say, you know, censoring, so to speak. Uh, deep fears, sea, oh, sea serpents. Oh, I see, okay. So it's not the concept of fear. It's something you might fear. You might fear these things from the deep sea serpents. There we go. Okay, that's what it is. Sausage grinder in Italy, question mark. What does that mean? I'm not sure what the pun is there. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to come back to it. Like mojitos, they're minty. Mojitos have fresh, fresh mint garnish, which is just one of the absolute best aromas that exists, in my opinion, is fresh mint. Tesla, for one. Um, is it referring to Nikola Tesla, or is it referring to the modern car company? Actually, it's a unit as well, now that I think about it. But I'm sure that this is minty going down. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what we're looking for there. Okay. Well, what was this again? Oh, no, I haven't looked at this yet. Like sofrito ingredients. So sofrito ingredients are, uh, that's what you would use to make, um, you know, as a base for a, a pasta sauce. Um, I always forget what's, I think sofrito is 
carrots, onion, and celery. Um, anyway, what is that? Links are free to ingredients. So you dice them. These are these are diced. You dice um, onion, onion, carrot, and celery. So what is this then? Sausage grinder in Italy, dente. Oh, <laughs> oh, I see. Like like tooth teeth. Dente. Okay, that's what it is. Wow. Okay, so you literally grind the sausage with with your teeth. I mean, that's it's a very punny reference. This is punnier than yesterday's crossword, I have to say. So, what is Tesla for one? Then I don't know. Trivia worth learning. Something facts. Are they fun facts? One of the most. <laughs> I think fun facts is one of those strangely ubiquitous phrases that's really overused because it's alliterative. So people just sort of use it. To mean fact, really. I mean, some. I mean, they're rarely specifically any more fun than other facts. I mean, sometimes they're interesting. Um, anyway, cool off in a way to fan yourself, maybe. Tesla. What is that? Mark. Oh no, a make a make of automobile, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. High. Sto if you're high, you're stoned in one sense of the word high. So moments of comprehension in an idiom. Uh, I'm assuming this is referring to something like aha moments, that sort of, that sort of thing, the moment the penny drops. Um, but I, I'm not sure what to do, in an idiom. So there's going to be a saying that, that includes this. Ding dong, I'm not sure. Out of the blue, yeah, okay, so it is, it's definitely not sudden. It's abrupt, maybe? Yeah, that sounds better. Well, not better, but that sounds equally good. Give temporarily, right? So you maybe loan something to someone. Oh, uptakes. Right, okay, if you're quick on the uptake, uh, you're quick to come to a moment of comprehension. So that's quick on the uptake is the idiom being referred to here. And uptakes in the context of that idiom are moments of comprehension. All right, this is fun facts. <laughs> I thought it probably would be. Ding dong. A doofus, right? Okay, so it is the meaning that I thought earlier. I just didn't didn't think of a valid word for it. So uh, here we go. Sonon ora ora quando, right? There we go. Okay. So we've solved it. So that that means now. Sorry about my slowness on that. So we've had uh, multiple um, uh, uh, Italian clues today. Uh, move slowly to dally. Don't dally. Don't dilly dally. It's, I think, more commonly used these days, to be honest. Apologue. Oh, fable. Okay, so I just didn't... This just wasn't vocabulary that was readily available to me. And then relative of a hecklephone. Okay, it is an instrument, but it's an oboe. I was right that it was a wind instrument of some some form, um, but I was imagining something brassier. Anyway, it's an oboe. There we go. Mediocre in modern slang. Meh, maybe? Could that be the answer? Let's try it and see. Courtroom request. A recess, maybe? I don't know. A uh, sidebar? Um, I'm not sure. Seriously memorable. Computer accessory. Okay, I'm not, I'm not confident about meh. I don't know how modern that is anyway. It feels too gen generic to be referred to as modern. Somewhat musically. Is it up you? Is that right? I'm not 100% certain. It's been so long since I regularly read music. City famous for its ham and cheese. Uh, this is on the tip of my tongue, and I can't, I can't get to it. Uh, let's see. Courtroom request. Oh, an appeal. Yeah, okay, so that, that's fine. So maybe it is up to you. All right. What about this? Mediocre and modern slang. Maybe too modern for me. We'll find out. Seriously memorable. Computer accessory. I don't know. I mean, that could be absolutely anything. I don't know. Pass it on. So an exclamation point typically means that we're not defining an answer or serving as a synonym of an answer. We're making a statement about an answer, something you could say about the answer to this clue. So this, the thing that we're going to put in the grid is something about which you might say, pass it on. 
like a tip or a baton or something, but obviously neither of those fits for different reasons. Sporting venue also known as a dojo. Interesting. Um, a sumo something? Sumo? Um, what? A sumo what? Some fraternity letters. M muse, maybe? Is that, is that letter used in fraternity naming? I'm not sure. Let's look at this. First word in the opening crawl for Star Wars Episode One. I don't know. I have no idea about that. First word, so it's a single word. I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is wrong. Where, where you might say that's the spirit, a distillery or a haunted house or um, that's the spirit, a game of some kind, you're cheering someone on. Oof, this is getting tough again at the end. It was tough at the beginning and now it's tough again at the end. It was fine in between. Seriously memorable. Computer accessory. Mediocre in modern slang. This will probably be something I've at least seen, but it won't be a word I regularly use. That's my prediction. Mid, maybe. Don't people say mid all the time now? That would mean neither of the things I have in the grid in this corner is correct, if that were, if that were right. Computer accessory. If that were a D instead of the next letter being a U, computer accessory. Okay, I, I, I don't, uh, I could, any of this could be wrong. I'm going to try mid because, because I do think that's at least a valid answer to this clue and see if it helps me. Courtroom request. Courtroom request. I don't know. Seriously, oh, iconic. Seriously memorable, iconic, that could work. So sumo rink, is that a phrase you'd use? Sumo, I, I do want this to be sumo something. I think that's gonna be right. Somewhat musically, oh, poco. Okay, up you, I forget what that means, but I was probably completely wrong with it here. Courtroom request, oh, a motion. Yes, you file a motion, that's a, that's a request essentially. Computer accessory, not dot com. What is it? Um, a, a dongle, maybe, that you plug into your computer. For, oh, Sumo Ring. There we go. Not Ring, but Ring. Okay. So City. Oh, Parma. That's the. That is the city I was trying to think of. I said I had. A, I said I had this on the tip of my tongue, and I just couldn't get it out. And I was probably being waylaid by the A that I erroneously had there. But yes, Parma ham and. Parma as in, you know, Parmesan cheese, Parmigiana, etc. Okay, pass it on. Oh, it is a baton. Oh, that was one of my examples. Oh, good. Okay. So you might say about a baton, pass it on if you're in a relay race, for instance. Okay. And then drill to bore a hole is to drill a hole. I didn't, don't think I looked at that one earlier. Here we have where you might say that's the spirit of seance. Okay, so it's on the right track with haunted house in terms of thinking of different meanings that spirit might have. And in this case, a ghost. So there we go. And then some fraternity letter. Oh, it is muse. Muse. It's uh, turmoil. Is I guess that's the first word in the opening crawl for Star Wars Episode One. Okay, I never would have ever in a million years remembered that, but uh, it seems to be correct. And there we go. that was the Saturday crossword. I um, it was a very interesting solve pattern. It was sort of a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was a. Um, Parabolic, is it? Is that what I'm looking for? Sort of difficulty curve where it it started off quite difficult for me and then and then got much smoother as I sort of um painted a a diagonal swath of of answers into the grid and then sort of a Z. So the the beginning and the end of the Z were were the really tough parts for me. Uh, let me know how you fared with this one in the comments. I'm curious to know. And it was very punny. Uh, lots of um Lots of clever cluing all over the place. And also a fair amount of, of uh, foreign language um, knowledge involved as well. So 
yeah, a really interesting, I thought, somewhat tricky and um, and uh, certainly for me, uh, often quite tricky puzzle. And there we go. That was the Saturday crossword. I'll be back tomorrow with the Sunday edition of the New York Times crossword. Shouldn't be as tough as this, but uh, will be a much larger grid. So it'll probably take longer regardless. Join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm-hmm.